Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are watching this video. Greg Sildman here, Chief Investment Officer. This is our series called Come Learn With Me, where we rate the articles that we put out over the last week or so. We look at what was shared and read, etc., and then we read with you the, the three or four that made it to the top that you all like. So let's take a look at this one. This is our old friend Jim Cramer. A chart suggests the S&P 500 may not be as strong in 2022 as it was in 20. Says Jim Cramer. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Technical analyst Carly Garner believes the investors should prepare for a more challenging trading environment next year. As we head in 2022, so this is okay, just the end of December. She thinks you need to be a lot less complacent because the kind of strength simply won't last forever. I should point out, having read this, we had a, a bad January, first week of January, which sometimes some people see as a barometer for the rest of the year. Investors may want to prepare for a more challenging trading environment next year compared with gains of 21, says Jim Cramer. Uh, leaning on technical analyst firm DeCarly Trading co-founder Carly Garner. The charts as interpreted by Carly Garner suggest the S&P 500 could still have more upside thanks to Santa Claus rally. It normally gets going this time of December. But as we head into 22, she thinks you need to be a lot less complacent because this kind of strength simply won't last forever. The S&P 500 is up 23.8% year to date, that's 21, and nearly 108% since its pandemic low of 223740 on March 23rd, 2020. While it's been an extraordinary rally for Wall Street, Kramer said Garner wants to stress that it's also been extremely unusual. As we get hit with a series of rate hikes next year, you're going to have to steal yourself for uglier action, Kramer said. One piece of technical data that Garner is considering is the S&P 500's longer term monthly chart, according to Kramer. After breaking through the trend line ceiling of resistance roughly a year ago, Kramer said it is now far above trend. I guess that's the trend line, yeah. Historically, these type of breakouts almost always see a retest of the previous broken trend line, uh, which would put it around 4,000 people that's down almost 14%. Yeah, if we get closed below 4,000, she thinks we'd have to pave the way for a much larger correction. It's 3,000 would be the implication. In Ghana's view, other worrisome signs include the momentum indicator, relative strength index sitting, and overbought territory on a monthly chart basis. Kramer said, when you look at the action over the last 20 years, reading this high can open the doors to some nasty declines. Kramer said, Garner also sees a concerning story in the weekly chart of the e-mini S&P 500 futures. When analyzed alongside data from Commodity Futures Trading Commission's commitments of trader reports, the compass contains the holdings of small traders, large speculators, and commercial hedges. It currently shows that professional money managers are, not, are net long S&P 500 futures to a degree not seen since October 2018, Kramer said. That was, of course, right before a huge decline that didn't run its course until Christmas Eve of the same year. Where is that? October of 2018. Okay. I guess. Where is that? Back there? Uh, maybe back there. Yeah. We saw a similar level of bullishness in 2018, also right before a sharp correction, Kramer said. When a trade gets too crowded, you eventually run out of buyers and the whole thing tends to collapse under its own weight. All right, well, there you have it, guys. <laughs> Who knows, right? Uh, but January has not been kind so far to the market. So um, listen, if uh, you would like to know a little bit more about me and uh, the work that I do, check out my blog, link below, gregsilverman.com. You want to know more about our technology pla uh, investment platform, register at ridabaninvest.com. Thanks for joining me for another session of Come Learn With Me. Greg Silverman out for now.